Okay, here we go. This is number 11 through number 20 for the 1D Kinematics Multiple Choice Pretest. And for the first one, it says the car has an initial speed of 5 meters per second, so that's our VO, and an acceleration of 1. Notice that it is positive. In the first 4 seconds, so that's our time after the acceleration begins, the car travels and it wants to know what is the distance that it travels. So in order to do this one, we need to use uh, the equation that does not have final speed in it. So here we're not worried about final speed and we really don't need it. We weren't given it either. d is equal to vot plus one half acceleration times time squared. The distance is then equal to our original speed, which we said was five, times our time, which is four seconds, plus 0.5, that's a half, times our acceleration, which is positive 1, times 4 squared. Now we have, it uh, looks like we have 20 here, plus 1 half of 16, which would be 8. So our final answer for number 11 is 28, and don't forget your unit, meters, and that would be the correct answer for number 11. Let's look at number 12. For number 12, which of the following correctly describes the motion depicted on the position time graph shown at the right? So the first thing we can look at is right here you'll notice that there's a flat line. And a flat line for position versus time means that our original velocity is equal to zero. So we know this is right. We also see that as time goes on, if we draw tangent lines to the, to the curve there, that we do have a negative acceleration. We do not have a constant velocity because we do have a curvy line. That means that there is not constant velocity, it means we're accelerating. So our answer here has got to be A and B. For number 13, it says uh, which of the following depicts a stationary particle? That one is letter C. And it's letter C because you'll see that you do not change position over a period of time. It is not letter D because this is a constant velocity. Be very, very careful that you don't just try to memorize these shapes. That doesn't work. You actually have to understand there's a big difference between position versus time and velocity versus time. So letter C is our correct answer and letter D is absolutely not. Number 14. For number 14, it says, when is the object not moving at all? So we're looking for, this is a velocity versus time graph. We're looking for when the velocity is zero. So one of those times would be right here. That would be at one and a half seconds. And the other time would be at four seconds. So for number 14, the only answer that they have there is the one and a half second. But we could change it on the test and say at which two times is an object not moving at all. And you'd have to choose these two. For number 15, says, when is the object moving with a constant velocity? So because we're dealing with a velocity versus time graph, this portion right here, you'll notice that it is not constant. It goes from negative one all the way up to about one and a half, or almost one and a half meters per second. So this can't be right. This one is not moving with a constant velocity either. It is decelerating. So accelerating and decelerating. So the only part would be right here. And uh, for number 15, it would be between 0 and 1 second. This is 0.5 seconds here. Um, so that is our answers between 0 and 1 second. So for number 15, that's what you have. Number 16, it says, what is the acceleration at 2 seconds? Let's take a look. Right at 2 seconds, this is where you are. And we know that this entire line is the slope of the velocity versus time curve. And slope is really just the change in velocity over the change in time, and that is acceleration. So let's pick a couple really easy points to do this with. We're going to pick this point right here and this one right here since it's right on the zero line. So our acceleration is equal to the final velocity minus the original velocity divided by the change in time. This time right here is 1.5 seconds, and this time is 2.5 seconds. So our change in time would be 2.5 minus 1.5. And our change in velocity, if we look, this one is 1. And we're going to subtract from that 0. And so we end up with 1 over 1. So our acceleration here is just 1 meter per second squared. And so notice this is positive, And it's positive because it's going up to the right. 
for number 17. Uh, this one says a stone is thrown upward. What could be said about its velocity and acceleration after it is thrown and before it reaches its maximum height? Assume up means a positive direction. So if it's moving up, our velocity is positive and our acceleration, remember, due to gravity, is always down. And so here we're going to make this negative. So right before it hits that top height, um, we see that the velocity is positive and our gravity, which is an acceleration, is negative. And that is answer letter A for number 17. For number 18, uh, shown at left is the velocity versus time graph for an object. So this is velocity. We notice that this thing is accelerating. It says, assume at time zero the object passes through zero. At what time will the object again pass through zero? So we really need to think about this. If it is moving in a positive direction, okay, we have our kind of our number line here. It starts at zero meters, and it's moving with a velocity of negative 10, so it's pretty big. And then over time, we see that it continues to slow down until that velocity becomes zero. And then for the same amount of time, it actually picks up speed until it gets all the way back to that zero mark again. So we need to figure out where is it that we have equal lengths for our velocity versus time graph. So here, this one is about one and a half seconds. So if we go another one and a half seconds, you end up right here at the uh, three meter mark. The other way to do this, probably the smarter way to do it, is to look at the two triangles for displacement. So here is one triangle. We need another triangle that would be exactly the same size. And to make one exactly the same size, we just move up here. And because these are the same size and they're on opposite sides, our displacement for each one is the same. And so once again, we say that at three seconds, that is where uh, the two would uh, finally end up making it going back through x equals zero. For number 19, uh, an object travels from one point in space to the other. Make a comparison between the displacement and the distance traveled. The answer for this one is, uh, if you think about it, if we have a circle, okay, and I go from here to here, our distance would be along the curve. So this is our distance. So we're going to say distance. And then the uh, line that goes from point A to point B, this is our displacement. And so our distance is greater than our displacement. If I just go from here to here, then our distance is equal to our displacement. Uh, whoops, displacement. Here we go, displacement. So it's one of two things. Uh, you could say that distance is either greater than or equal to the displacement. And that is how you know number 19 is letter C. Then finally for number 20, uh, this is the next question, so let me get rid of these things. For number 20, which statement below about the distance between the starting and ending positions and the displacement between the starting and ending positions is correct? Um, it's equal to the distance between the starting and ending positions, so your answer here is B. The distance between the starting and ending positions is equal to the magnitude of the displacement between the starting and ending positions. So we kind of talked about this one in class. If I have a start and I have an end position, when I draw a line between the two, we say that that line is displacement. If I follow some weird path like this and go here, and I follow that path, that is the distance. But be careful, because it says, what is the distance between the starting and ending positions? So now we're not really following a different path. We're actually following the same, plate, the same path. So this is also the distance. So your answer here is B. It is equal to the magnitude of the two. Even if you went in the opposite direction and started measuring here, your displacement would be negative and your distance would be positive. But remember, this one um, says uh, w about the distance between the two. If you look at the answer, it talks about magnitude. So it's not worried about direction at all. 
And that is number 20. That's where we're going to stop for this video. Next video will be 21 through 30.